something that's also very important to discuss is how the auto bed leveling works and what it adds to the printer, what you can do and what you can't do. So now that we've set up the auto bed leveling hardware and we've uploaded the firmware, we can start using the the unit and let's connect to our printer. There we've connected to our printer. So the first thing that we want to do is to measure the height between the nozzle and where the the auto bed leveling switch where it triggers. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll home all three axis. If we press on the home all button, it homes the x axis, y axis, and then with the probe it will home in the center of the bed. So now the x, y, and z is at zero. So the printer thinks the position at which it is currently that's the z zero position. So now you'll see that the nozzle is about six seven millimeters away from the from the bed so we need to measure that distance and we'll add that distance to the to the g code that's added to the the code for every print to do this we need to move the nozzle down now you'll see if you press on move the z axis down nothing happens because the printer is restricting the movement because the printer sees okay i'm at zero at the moment and it can't move into the negative values. So now we need to tell the printer that it's at a higher height or higher value, Z value, than zero. So with that, we in the, the line where we can add the G code, we write G92 space, and we say, okay, the Z axis is now at, for instance, 10 millimeters. So we'll send that and now if you press on the minus one on the z axis you'll see that it actually moves down and now it displays negative values there in the the z axis so let's go down you can take a piece of paper and move it below the nozzle and we need to know where it starts to to hit the nozzle of the where the nozzle starts to hit the bed so Mine is now very close. Now we go down in 0.1 millimeters. Okay, and that's about the the distance that I get at the moment. So I get a 6.2 uh, millimeters, and that's what we are going to add to our slicer as the height difference between the Z probe and the nozzle. So now we will take the that six point the value of 6.2 millimeters in your case it will it will be different we'll go to the slicer tab at the moment i'm using the kira slicer in this case and if i open it and i go to the to the g code tab the star g code shows the code that will be added to the the g code at the beginning of the print so at the beginning here i have to the G code to activate the bed and then to activate the hot end. Then I have a command there M851 space Z and now I'll change it to minus 6.2. So that will set, that will override the offset between the probe and the nozzle. Um, that's in the, the firmware and that will be the distance that the nozzle lowers before the, the print so when we start printing we'll need to check if that value is correct so this value will be very close but the real way to, to check it or to measure it is to see if your your first layer if it the, the the strand that it puts down for the first layer it shouldn't lie on top of the glass it and it shouldn't the nozzle shouldn't be too close that the plastic doesn't come out it should be um, it should push the push of plastic a little bit flat onto the the glass then then it's just right so with our first print we'll check that value and we might change it by 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 millimeters to get it absolutely correct and from there it shouldn't be necessary to change this value except if you change on the hardware for instance if you change the 
the nozzle then you need to redo this process because then this value will most probably change then after this we'll have the the G28 code we'll do a full home all access and then G29 where we run the the auto bed leveling routine this G code you can also get or copy from the mega upload folder there is a text file with the G code for different slicing software and then you can use the slice that that you are using the other thing that's very useful of the bed leveling kit is to measure the level of the the bed so let's we can save this one let's close the slicer we go back to manual control let's go up by 10, 10 millimeters that we make sure there's enough clearance and when we run the bed leveling routine um, it will show the values that it measure here in the lock if, you, if your repetitive house doesn't have the lock here at the bottom you can click there at the top you can click toggle lock and it will open the lock here at the bottom so before we run the the auto bed leveling routine we need to own the x axis and the y axis and now we run G29 this will run the full bed leveling routine it's set to measure four points in four different places the first one is in the right back corner the second one left back then left front and then right front now at the bottom in the lock there you'll see the the measurements that was taken first it will show the x and the y position and then it will show the the z positions now we don't worry so much about the, what the value is what we want to have a look at is the difference between the values so this will give you an idea of what is the how parallel is your x and your your y axis um, to each other so we want the z values the difference between the z values to be between about we've, we've found that uh, if it's the difference is about less than 0.25 millimeters then we get very consistent and very good prints the auto bed leveling will compensate for differences bigger than that but what we found is the the uh, auto bed leveling routine um, it sees the bed as a flat plate so if there's if the plate is bending or uh, other discrepancies it only measures the flatness of the theoretical plate at four points so obviously it doesn't create a three-dimensional shape of the of the whole bed so it cannot compensate for other factors that it doesn't measure during the bed leveling routine so what we want to do is without the without the auto bed leveling um, routine or mechanism you, you need to get the flatness of the bed or the the bed level within about 0 0.05 millimeters now it increases that tolerance to about 0.25 millimeters so you can run the bed leveling routine check your values you can make adjustments run it again and check your values till you see that the difference between those four values are less than 0.25 millimeters and then you can do your your first print to check if the um, if the height value is correct how we like to check if the height value is correct is we do a print with a block we call it test block it's a 20 by 20 millimeter block this the STL file for this block is also on your uh, on the mega upload folder let's close that now we will copy this three times so that we have four blocks and then we'll move them closer to the the four corners of the
of the printing bead like that. Then once, have you, once you have your printer set up, you can run this print. You don't have to let it finish. If it, when it's finished with the, with the second layer, then you can stop it if you want to. So here you'll see if the, if the leveling is correct in terms of your height and you'll also see that it corrects for the for the angle of the or the slope of the of the bed in the x and the y direction another thing to remember about the auto bed leveling is that if your bed is very skewed so it's sloping let's say sloping a lot to the left then the auto bed leveling will compensate for that but it will also make your component slightly skewed because your sides will not be perpendicular to the the bottom of the the component that's why we what we like to put a, a limit in the variation between the the sides of between the the, the level of the the bed so that the variation is not is not too much and with the current 0.25 millimeter variation over the the size of the bed you'll get a maximum angular error between the the bottom and the sides of the component as of, of about 0.1 degrees which we feel is within acceptable tolerance okay so now let's do the the test print with the with the four blocks and see how it how it comes out. So we'll slice the the model that it shows the four blocks and then we'll say start print. Okay we started the print and now the bed has reached the temperature there it does the normal homing procedure. Now it will start with the auto bed leveling routine. Now it will wait for the hot temp to reach temperature and when it has reached temperature it will start with the printing. There it's starting with the printing. At first glance it seems like it's slightly high because in some places the filament isn't sticking to the to the bed and the filament is lying like a sausage on the on top of the glass it's not pressed onto the glass then you can see how the how it picked up so I'm gonna stop the the print and I'm gonna increase the amount that the nozzle moves down after the bed leveling to the to the print I'm gonna increase it by I'm gonna try 0.1 millimeters and then I'm gonna do a test print again and see what it looks like okay for this print I have changed the value from 6 minus 6.2 to minus 6.3 so the nozzle was a little bit closer to the bed you can see that the prints look a little bit better but there's still areas that doesn't fill so it's you can see it's still a bit high from the from the bed so i'm gonna change the value now from 6.3 to 6.4 and do another test run one thing to remember when you do a new test run is to re-slice the the print uh, so you can use the new value else it will still use the old value with the third print uh, you can see that uh, everything sticks to the bed the infill is, is solid 
and this is the correct height for height setting for for the setup. So we'll keep this value in our in our slicer and use it in our future prints.